Hello and welcome to the Star Pilot instructional video series. My name is Louis Soltero, the author of the Star Pilot, and I'll be your host today. Today we'll be discussing some of the site planning features of the Star Pilot. The Star Pilot is a self-contained, easy-to-use celestial navigation and piloting computer available on a number of different platforms, including Apple iPhones and iPod Touch. For information on Star Pilot, its features, documentation, and educational materials, please visit us on the web at www.starpilotllc.com. So let's get started. Um, today we're going to focus on a specific problem from the um, uh, Star Pilot manual. Uh, this particular problem is in the section on Star Planet ID and the specific problem is to ID a body found at altitude 31, 36 degrees with a bearing of 171 at the given DR position at that given date and time, GMT. We'll also use the same data to do site planning, some of the other site planning features, or view some of the other site planning features. So you might want to record these, this information or print out this page or do a screen capture so that you have this particular problem available as we work through the different problem sets in the Star Pilot. So here we are. This is our Star Pilot running on an iPhone simulator on a Mac. To execute it, we just double click on the icon. And uh, as discussed previously, all of the Star Pilot features and functions are available through menus. As also discussed previously, when solving problems on the Star Pilot, it's very convenient to enter the data that is common to all the different functions that you're going to be executing in the settings so that you don't have to enter them over and over again. So we do that by selecting settings and we can do that by just clicking the settings icon in the tab bar or by selecting the menu entry called settings in the index menu. The first thing that I normally do is click on the factory results defaults to just set the the calculator to a set of reasonable defaults and then go ahead and modify those defaults by entering the information. For this particular problem we're going to be entering all of all of our problems are going to be executed on September the 10th of 1996 so we'll go ahead and enter that in the settings so that we don't have to type that in over and over again. 1996 okay um, at a DR of 34 degrees point three north and a west longitude of thirty six degrees point thirty minutes um, west. So uh, the data entry procedures for the star pilot have been discussed numerous times before and uh, are available in the manual and you can always access them with the Context sensitive help, which just finds how the data is to be entered for this particular panel. But we enter the degrees, followed by a decimal point, followed by the minutes, and then the decimal minutes, with west being negative and south also being negative. As you type in the values, you'll see the actual resultant uh, longitude or latitude displayed at the top of the screen. All right, so we're also going to be using our sextant in the planet ID function and we see that our values, our default values are set the same as they are for the particular problem so we have an index error of 0 and a height of I of 10. So we're done with the settings. Now we can go ahead and take a look at some of our site planning functions. All of the site planning functions are defined in a menu in the index under the index section called celestial bodies. Uh, you'll find a number of different site planning functions here. All the functions listed here are site planning, planning functions except for the site, anal site, analy site analyzer which we'll discuss in a different tutorial. So let's start with a very simple one. Basically when is the Sun going to rise on that specific date or when is it going to set? The Sunrise Land Sunset function does exactly that. We tap on that particular menu entry we enter the date in our DR lat lawn and compute sunrise and we get a set of resultant data. Um, the star pilot computes 
the twilights, the a.m. twilights, the sunrise, the sunset time, the p.m. twilights, the local hour noon, equation of time, the computed altitude for the sun at noon, the azimuth for the rise and the set of the sun, and the twilight and p.m. twilight for Aries and the GHA of Aries so that you can use your star finder if you prefer to f do your site planning with, um, with that device. Also note that some users require the amplitude of the sun. Although the star pilot doesn't compute the amplitude of the sun directly, the amplitude of the sun is just the variance from 90 or 170 degrees and so it's very easy to get the azimuth values and compute the amplitudes. And the definition of amplitude is found again in the context sensitive help section of the star pilot towards the bottom. Like the sunrise sunset, the moonrise moonset computes the moonrise and the set times for the moon. Again, we tap on that particular function set the date, the RLAT lawn, compute moon rise, moon set, and the star pilot will compute the date and the time of the rise, the date and the time of the set, the phase of the moon, zero being new, one being full, and the age of the moon. The pre-compute function is a particularly useful one. It will compute the altitude and the azimuth of a specific body so that you can, you can compute those values prior to going out and shooting your, your, your sights. To use this particular feature, you would select the body that you're interested in. In this particular one, uh, we will do Jupiter for obvious reasons, for reasons that will be obvious here shortly. We'll enter the watch time which for this particular problem was 2107, 26. On that particular date, DR lat lawn, and then we go ahead and say compute ephemeris. Uh, the star pilot will then compute for you the computed altitude. So although this is not going to be the observed altitude, it's going to be very close to it so you can set your sextant to this particular value prior to um, trying to find the body. It'll give you the azimuth for the body. It'll also give you the ephemeris information that you would normally obtain from the nautical almanac uh, when doing site reductions. Uh, this information is available from the nautical almanac. It can also be computed using a sister program to the star pilot called the INA uh, INA computes all of the values in the nautical almanac and um, that almanac of course is incorporated, co incorporated in the star pilot. So star pilot doesn't normally give you the GHA, the declinations and the uh, SHAs for the specific bodies because it uses them internally but if you were working through a specific problem manually doing a manual site reduction and wanted access to the information you would find it in the pre-compute function. Most people just use this for the altitude and the azimuth of the specific body.